Hey, Happy Friday. This week, a new company tries to reinvent AI hardware. Android gets a proper airdrop equivalent, kind of, and Google completely reshuffles its entire hardware business. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Incogni. Okay, this was a jam-packed week for new things. We start the brief with Apple announcing that the Vision Pro headset will launch on the 2nd of February in the US for $3,499, but the company still hasn't given word on any other market yet, likely because they can't seem to be able to make enough of these devices in the short term. Then, also this week, CES happened with lots of new announcements, and we have to start with three major display news. First, in transparent TVs, Samsung announced a transparent micro-LED TV for the first time ever as a pretty wild concept for a new technology. And then LG announced a transparent OLED television, which you'll actually be able to buy yourself this year. Pretty sick. Then, second, Sony announced a complete surprise when they said that they completely reworked their mini-LED backlighting technology for their TVs, which is now apparently so good that they're going to go all-in on a mini-LED on the high-end this year. Take that, OLED fans, I guess. And third, LG Display demoed its first-ever OLED TVs that can actually hit over 3,000 nits of brightness thanks to their second-generation microlens array technology, which gives OLED a really big boost to brightness. Cool. Moving on from TVs, the second big CES category is actually laptops. AMD just announced a new set of laptop chips, Intel revealed its 14th generation Raptor Lake laptop processors, and Intel's Core Ultra series just launched a few weeks ago as well, and so with new chips, it's time for a ton of new laptops. Just about every laptop you can think of was refreshed, and my overall take here is that Intel's new Core Ultra chips in particular seem to be surprisingly popular with OEMs. The uptake is really aggressive and fast this year. It is going into every form factor that you can imagine, and many of the refreshed models, like the Asus Zephyrus for example, have received really positive feedback for finally having much improved battery life, graphics performance, and so on. And on top of the usual refreshes, we also got new and really experimental stuff, like the dual screen Asus laptop with a clever pop out integrated keyboard that reviewers say actually works well for once. Then Asus also released basically a foldable 17.3 inch OLED monitor if you want this kind of form factor on the go without kind of having a crazy laptop. And the Nova showed off perhaps the wildest new design with its $2,000 ThinkBook Plus Gen 5. This is a Windows 11 laptop, except you can take off the screen, which then becomes a fully self contained Android tablet. There's a whole computer with an Intel chip in the base, and then a whole tablet with a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 in the screen, so the two are literally separate systems. That sounds a little bit crazy, and I do want to see one in person, but yeah, this is a big week for laptops, and especially for Intel, it was actually kind of a good week for once. And moving on to weird tech announcements, Samsung refreshed Bolly this week. It's a surprisingly cute robot that can just follow you around and can answer your questions using AI and it can project stuff around you with a projector. The company also announced a frame speaker so you can hide your speaker and pretend that it is art. Another company showed off the Marble Wi-Fi 6 OpenWRT router as a router designed to blend into your living room. And to cap it off, there's also a new e-ink headset for reading stuff almost hands free for $350. I guess that's CES for you. This was a pretty crazy week for gadgets, as is expected on the CES week, but for my first story of the week, we're going to be talking about yet another new gadget that I think kind of takes the crown. I can't decide if that's in a good or in a bad way. So a completely unknown company called Rabbit has just launched the R1, a new AI device that is supposed to open apps for you and help you complete tasks primarily using your voice. It is a bit like the Humane AI pin, except this has a proper screen and an interface, hallelujah. It is designed by Teenage Engineering, hence the quirky vibes. And thankfully Rabbit doesn't claim that this will replace your phone, but instead it will just live next to it. You can supposedly use a web portal of the company in which you log into your account, and then you can click through any of the websites that you use to train the AI so it can kind of repeat the processes that you've done just with a quick voice command. So it can learn to automatically basically repeat the tasks that you've shown it like a kind of task rabbit. 
The device itself only costs $199 and it doesn't need a direct subscription, which is way more reasonable than the Humane AI pin. And at this price, they have already sold out the 10,000 pre-orders, so people are clearly at least somewhat excited. Now, all of this to me sounds way better than the Humane AI pin, but still all the demos were like super vague or they included things like booking an entire holiday just with like one command, which I cannot imagine actually working with an AI in any realistic scenario. Perhaps this company will prove me wrong but just as they announced their product, actually two different things were announced at the same time that kind of proved that this device, this like AI voice controlled future is actually way harder than we thought. First, Humane laid off 4% of its employees to cut costs, including their CTO, the person in charge of their entire technology stack, and the company did so before they even shipped their first product. Yikes. And meanwhile, Google also just this week announced that it is killing off 17 underutilized capabilities of Google Assistant, which include asking the assistant to take certain actions by voice, such as send a payment, make a reservation, or to post to social media. Those are like the exact commands that Rabbit and Humane, for example, say you will want to do with your voice and with AI. And given that people don't seem to be doing that with the existing kind of AI assistants like Google Assistant, well, that doesn't sound great in my opinion. Okay, and for my second story of the week, Android is finally kind of maybe getting a proper airdrop competitor in the form of QuickShare. You know how Apple has this elegant airdrop system where you can share files wirelessly between Apple devices using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and it just works? Well, Google has built Nearby Share for Android, Samsung has built Quick Share for Samsung devices, and Microsoft has built Nearby Sharing for Windows, and all three of these things are designed to do more or less the same thing as airdrop, but just within each brand's own ecosystem. And all three of these actually work pretty great, but having three systems is actually not exactly ideal. So the news is that Google's Nearby Share and Samsung's Quick Share are merging and the final thing will be called Quick Share and we presume that Samsung's tech actually won out because of not only the name, but also because some exclusive Samsung features like the ability to share multiple contacts simultaneously are actually coming to the shared standard. Meanwhile, PC manufacturers like LG are confirmed to be in discussions to expand Quick Share to their Windows PCs as a pre-installed app. And of course, the Samsung ecosystem of devices like their TVs, their Windows, laptops, etc. should all support this too. Now, given that this will be pre-installed on many Windows devices going forward, and given that Microsoft and Samsung have actually worked together on a lot of their kind of file sharing and syncing standards in the past, like your phone, for example, I actually fully expect Microsoft to drop their proprietary solution and to adopt this one instead soon too. And if that happens, we would get a proper airdrop competitor for almost the entire non-Apple ecosystem, which is actually pretty exciting. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Google is making really big changes to their hardware divisions. Specifically, the Pixel, Nest, and Fitbit teams are getting merged into a single hardware team, and the Fitbit co-founders James Park and Eric Friedman are actually gone, and Google also laid off hundreds of people around Google Assistant, AR, Core Engineering, and more. So that's a pretty drastic simplification and downsizing of Google's hardware efforts, and my guess is the following. I think Fitbit devices are going to go away completely as Google focuses on just the Pixel Watch, hence the Fitbit guys leaving. Google Assistant has barely seen any dedicated new hardware in multiple years, and with the constant job cuts in both software and hardware, it's clear that Google keeps wanting to downsize this business further. Nest will stick around for smart home stuff, but the money is likely in a generative AI, not really smart home automation. Now, the layoffs in AR are actually really surprising to me, especially given that we were told that Google and Samsung are gearing up to launch their Apple Vision Pro competitor, so maybe that project just isn't going as well as they hoped, and it's pretty clear to me that Pixel is actually the only hardware brand that Google has actually seen success with, so they basically just want to put all their resources behind that going forward. I think that's understandable from Google's perspective, but for us, I do also think that it will mean that Google will get a lot more conservative and we will see them taking a lot fewer risks. Now, regardless of what device you use, one of the most universal experiences on any of them is that you get a bunch of spam emails, robocalls, text messages, etc. And these things are not just annoying, they're actually often even dangerous. Phishing and email compromise attacks are the largest sources of financial crimes around the world. They're growing incredibly fast and they work so well because scammers can easily individualize their attacks to fool you in particular. Turns out companies called data brokers hoover up as much of the internet as they can and they create personalized profiles on all of us that can get surprisingly detailed. 
Here's a list of 49 data brokers that made a profile of me without my knowledge, and just about anyone, be it an advertiser or a scammer, can buy my profile from these and end up sending me a personalized message. Combine that with generative AI and automation and you get a ton of crap at best, but increasingly also a ton of really high quality scams at worst. Oh, and don't think that you're immune just because you're internet native either. Young people actually fall for scams like these at higher rates than boomers because they have more of their data online, so they get much more personalized scams. So we need a solution to remove our data from these data brokers. And in some countries, there's actual laws that require these companies to comply if you send them a request. But how do you know which companies have your data, how you should contact each one of them? How do you make sure that they don't just add you back into their database after they deleted you the first time, etc.? Well, you do that with Incogni's information removal service, which actually does the job of automatically reaching out to the data brokers on your behalf to request the removal of your personal data based on laws in applicable markets, and they deal with the objections from their side. Oh, and they continually keep doing this to keep you from re-entering those databases, so that's why this is a subscription. For you, the process is automatic and fast, and you get feedback on the online public and private databases that it scans and removes you from. Note that only some countries have laws around this, so in other countries this might not work at all, but this is still a pretty good selection. And to sign up, you should use incogni.com slash FridayCheckout or my code FridayCheckout at checkout to get 60% off your annual premium subscription. Once again, that is incogni.com slash FridayCheckout. Happy incogniing and I'll see you next Friday.